Hello buddy, you're watching The Haunt Channel. And today what I have to show you guys is um, something a little different. I've never done anything like this on my channel. But um, I just figured I would um, because a few of my friends said it would also be a good idea for me to make a video on this. So, you know, like, uh, why not? Because, you know, I'm pretty good at this stuff now. But anyways, what I'm going to show you is how to repair um, latex props and mask. Um, and a few different tips on what to use. Um, so yeah, this is some of the supplies you can use, or I use these at least. Um, just some liquid latex. Um, this I used a few kinds, like the first two kinds um, I used were basically for like, you know, latex for your face, like, you know, makeup and whatnot. Um, you know, if you wanted to create a scar on your face or something, you know, that, like, um, what's it called? Like a jar, I guess, of liquid latex for, you know, makeup. But, um, and they did work on props, but I will say they didn't work the best because the two kinds I used, um, especially the first one, it got like, it was really yellow and I didn't find out till later because, you know, it was like my first time experimenting with latex over a year ago. I just started using the makeup kind to, to begin with. And that kind, I mean, it, it, like I said, it did work, but it just wasn't the best. So, um after the, the first two different kinds of like you know the makeup liquid latex kind uh, my mom actually got me this for christmas last year um you can find these on uh, amazon it's called a uh, latex you can see that's how it's spelled right there um and yeah there's a few different kinds i have another one that's you know made for molding and stuff in case you know i want to make a mold of something uh but this one you know it just Basically, yeah, because you can say it's for moles, but this is also really good for repairing all sorts of different types of latex and definitely the best kind I used. Um, so that's what I recommend using. Um, and then I recommend you try not to get on your hands just because of anything. And plus, you know, it feels kind of weird and it's it just not good. I mean, it, if you can get away from your skin, especially your face, if possible. Then that'd be good, but I you I definitely uh, use these vinyl clear disposable gloves. You can find these at like your local grocery store or whatever. Um, just a couple bucks, but it, it comes with a whole pack of them. So whenever I use these, um, uh, the latex, I put these on, and I will probably be doing a demonstration at the end of me repairing an item. But I'm gonna go over a uh, few tips and tricks that you need to know. And when you get this, there's a few, um, you know things you need the uh, note to take care of this like you want to make sure it's uh you know closed tightly so it, you know it doesn't dry out uh, you don't want to leave it opened for too long you could even put it in like a plastic solo cup and work with that so it's not open the whole time and don't make sure make sure it's not in like make sure it's like a room temperature so not like really hot or don't freeze it at all because that just ruins the entire thing and even says it on here and definitely try to get it away from your face because that won't be good but yeah, I think that's all I gotta say about that. So I'm gonna show you um, a few tips and tricks with these now. So obviously over time, you know, the more you experiment the stuff, the more uh, tips and tricks you uh, learn. And um, I first learned how to do latex from uh, my good friend uh, Hicks Honor, because he was really experienced with that and he had a few uh, good tips. And before I got into it, which, you know, he taught me some stuff uh, like, you know, the kinds of latex to use and whatnot and how to repair these. Um, I used to give him some of my rotted props and he'd fix them up pretty good. But yeah, so now I learned them. So yeah, good, um, big shout out to, uh, my friend, uh, Shane Hicks Honor. But, um, one of the, I'm going to show you a few, uh, tips and tricks here. And the first one's going to be, um, using hot glue. Now, I know that sounds interesting and I know people might say, first of all, obviously, um, you can't restore latex forever, which is true. You know, anything latex, it depends, you know, varies when it's going to rot. But if, either way, all the latex stuff will eventually rot, no matter how old it is or what not and how it's made. But yeah, anyways, the first item I was going to use an example here is the, uh, this is a mailbox cap by Morbid Industries. And, you know, you just strap this to like a mailbox, these straps here, one of the ones that's post and stake into the ground. But uh, when I, I I got this thing rotted, uh, I picked this up, and it was left in the shed for a while. So there's definitely, uh, I'll look over climates in a little bit and, you know, ways to properly store these things. But 
I can't. I, I already repaired this, so I'm gonna show you ones I already repaired, and then at the end, I'll probably do an example. Um, yeah, this. I mean, a few areas in the um, legs were all ripped, but the tail was all just ripped up and whatnot. Um, you can see this is actually where I repaired it, and um, you know there were a few spots if I can find them. I I kind of painted the area, but there were like you know holes and stuff. And they were just like, you know, they're supposed to be attached together. But what I did was um, I put hot glue in the cracks and I put them together and then I put latex over it. So, you know, it kept it all nice and sealed. Um, and I know people might be saying, oh, well, wouldn't the hot glue uh, melt it? And, you know, there's a chance it could. It depends, um, you know, my hot glue has a setting on high and low. So it depends how long you put it there and um, the, the setting you put it on. And the kind of uh, hot glue I use, um, you know, well, it's not really the hot glue, I guess, but maybe the gun, it does dry pretty fast. So, you know, it doesn't stay hot for a long time, which is good. So it's not, it's not going to stay there for like, what, like 10 minutes? It, and it, it, it really, you shouldn't melt it unless you just pipe like a whole glob on or whatever. But just do as much as you need and it should be good. And then what I did was I put a, I use black acrylic paint when I need to um, do holes and stuff. So for those, it was like obviously visible and it looked looked bad. So I just got some uh, acrylic paint. Um, I don't think there's really a specific kind you can use. Just go to Michaels or something, and acrylic paint does work good. And sometimes it has weird reactions. Like sometimes it feels like it's gonna crack, but as you can see, this is really squishy, and I'm still like pushing on it, and the rest of it's still squishy, the original. But I just put some extra black paint on there, and it, it it's not uh, cracking at all, which is good. And then I might as well just give you another tip um, while I have this. This is uh, sealing big rips, not like little ones where I use the hot glue, but big rips. So what I mean by that is this hole, th there was a giant hole right here. You can see I repainted it with uh, what I just told you. But what you can do with this patch it is you could use, what I use is a clear, a clear plastic wrap, you know, you use for like putting foods in your fridge. And you just get you cut rip off a piece and make it all nice and you can um, i recommend you know because it's kind of hard to work with all the stuffing in there well you could also remove some stuffing because of reasons why some of the stuff rots is well this was obviously left in the shed with bad climate control um but the reason why some of this stuff rots is because um sometimes it's overstuffed so you might have to remove some stuffing but yeah, I put a clear plastic wrap in here and I, I managed to glue it pretty good. It might not be as flat as you want it to be, but it, it you know, you might, you have to maneuver it a little bit, but I just glued it to the, um, what was around the, what was left of the original latex and, and then, you know, I put latex over it and whatnot. You can also use a uh, uh, scotch tape or whatever just to fill it. And if you, you know, you were to put it on the just put nothing on it and just put it over the stuffing. The stuffing won't really work that good. It'll all stick out and it just, it just won't be good. So I recommend putting something to seal it and then putting latex over it and then paint it. Here's a few more examples of the uh, sealing method. Um, two zombie babies right here I got from some friends which were in really bad shape when I first got them. And so right here on Jugular Jimmy, you can see the difference of paint, which is where it was all rotted. Um, I put some more of that clear uh, plastic wrap and I even uh and the whole hand was actually like ripped off so um the, I hot glued around it so it would go back um together and I put latex and painted it so and as you can see it didn't melt it at all um you know and then I yeah and I know the paint's not exact which you know you might not always get the exact paint but you can get something pretty close so this looks it's pretty close and it will do and that you know I put this thing out um at night on Halloween no one's gonna notice or whatever just a small thing but yeah, it does work. I had to make a new finger for him too. And what I actually did here was I got like a little uh, skewer thing, um, little wooden, like thin, uh, you know, bamboo skewers, what they call them. So I cut one off. I put t um, blue painter's tape over it and then I put latex over it and then painted it. And you can see it looks pretty fine. Add a little blood drop to uh, add to it. But yeah, and then it works pretty good. You can see it is kind of cracking, that, but that's just the paint coming undone. But either way, it's fine. And then same thing that here, his whole head was like ripped around here. So I hot glued it together and, you know, put latex and painted it and it's fine. Um, but yeah, 
And uh, speaking on it, I guess we could do cracks as well. Um, you know, these aren't really cracks, more of rips, but you know, put, just fill it enough, we'll put latex in it, fill it if you have to, with something first with a, you know, a seal, like I said, mentioned before, like tape or something. But these were tiny, I just put latex in it, and I, well, I glued it first, and then I put latex in it so it would go together. Because the way it looked, it was kind of like expanding the face, it looked bad, so I just glued it, so now it looks pretty fine. And then, yeah, latex, paint, and then you're good to go. See, this whole, all these uh, repainted parts, as you can see, were all rotted. But um, I think it looks pretty fine now. I guess it gives them some highlights as well. And this thing was pretty faded as well. So, I mean, if I wanted to, I could do a whole repaint. But luckily, the whole thing wasn't rotted. You can see the difference of paint. It's supposed to be more purple. It's more gray here, but it's fine. I, I'd rather keep this thing more original, so I'm not going to really, like, paint it as all. But, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's uh, more tips with the hot glue. Now I'm going to do uh, more tips on cracking. So this is another prop, the Morbid Industries Creeper Peep Ghost, which I made a video on a while ago when I first got it. And when I did get it, it was pretty rotted. Um, so this is, I'm going to show you tips on cracking and hardening. Um, well, you're going to use this hand, for example. Um, you can see it's supposed to be like really squishy and soft. I'm surprised this whole thing isn't rotted because honestly, it's not. I can you can tell if latex is made well or better than other kinds, and this is like pretty thin. So I'm surprised this isn't um, rotting, which I'm not complaining, obviously, but it's kind of surprising it's lasting. But there's a few parts like this hand. I'm not. I'm. I'm just lightly tapping. I'm not going to put a whole lot of pressure, but you can tell that it's really hard. Then you go like this. See, that's really squishy. I can't push this in unless I really try which I don't want to crack it but yeah it's all hard and you know what I you know I know people mentioned this before you could use a blow dryer or something and on a light setting and maybe and you know it might soften it up but you know even after you do that eventually it'll just get hard again so there's really not a whole lot of point doing it the only re reason I can um think of doing that is if it's like you know something's warped like say I don't know like this was all stuck together and then or like deformed um you could just like you know reform it but it wouldn't really it eventually get hard again but it so it wouldn't stop the hard it wouldn't make it really soft but yeah you could just reform it but what I do is you know just because you know it's it's obviously rotting so I put latex all over this thing and um, even on some of the, uh, cause it gets like soft right around here. I even like put it around there. So, you know, it doesn't really like, spread and it will keep it intact. The latex does like, um, you know, it makes it a bit soft on all the time. Uh, but it does, um, the latex that you add on it, it's obviously, it, might, it will obviously rot eventually cause it's latex, but it'll stop it from uh, getting worse. At least for a while, it's, I, it's obviously um, almost impossible to, uh, tell when exactly a thing's going to start rotting but eventually they all will but yeah and i will there's another thing i want to mention there you can see there's a crack right here and you just want to basically fill it until uh, you know it's pretty much full and, and pretty much you'll be able to tell when it's filled if you can't like you know, if it feels smooth now that's how you know it's filled properly and um, another thing I do want to mention while we're on it is peeling. You can see this is the latex I added, and it is peeling a little bit. Most of the time, it's fine with one layer of latex, but, you know, you, there's going to be a few points like this where it starts peeling. And I wouldn't recommend peeling it, because then you're going to basically peel the whole thing and you add more. It's just going to be a waste of latex. So basically, you could, cut, you could start by cutting the top if it's too bumpy, but try to leave as much on as possible. And then you just put like a, d a dab of like latex on it and wait for it to dry and it should be good. And if it continues peeling, you know, just do it in other areas. But overall, yeah, there's another crack there, by the way, which I filled. So this thing's been repaired. This whole top is hard as well. But yeah, so that's pretty much how you deal with uh, cracking and uh, hardening. Another tip I want to show you, which is a really good tip. Um, Hicks Hunter actually sh taught me this one. This is the Spirit Halloween um, Big Demon uh, 2002 prop, so extremely old. Um, you know, 10 years and almost 11. Uh, but um, this is, uh, this is all ripped right here. You can see a difference of paint. Uh, but yeah, there's some cracks too, which I just showed you with a pair, but this like for the most part this is all ripped so basically what um um ha we did was 
we got some uh, spray expanding foam you can find at a uh, home depot and we, we we were able to fill it without latex like yeah you could put a seal on it but it's not like this you know this could also work uh even though it's hard it's not like you know well it's not gonna be like squishy but it does work and it's fine um it does fill it up nicely and then you can put latex around it to seal it even more but this really helps with uh, filling big uh, gaps and stuff and so and then you just paint it with acrylic um the best you can and yeah so spray expanding foam is re a really good uh technique to use and you know you have to fill something uh that's warped or whatever this will be a really um really good uh method to use here's some other techniques you use with the spray foam now i have a spasm here and a static hex by morbid and these aren't rotting they're really good condition but you can see their necks are a little bit warped or whatever so the good thing about morbid props is they usually have like you know this hole right there um, that's just some ripped stuffing but you know spasm's a better example he, you can see it goes all the way up. Um, you know, they cut this. There's usually these holes in the mortar props because, you know, it always costs, um, well, reduced uh, production cost and whatnot because, you know, phone, back then, you know, the stuff is pretty expensive to do. So, you know, save, they did that. But, yeah. Um, so what you do is, you know, for, I'll use spasm here and then I'll go to hex. Uh, you can, if you, it's going to, it might be hard. So you could either use like the bottom way to entrance to a, maybe try to get there and fill, fill it so it looks more up like this you see mine's looking down but or you could even cut like a tiny hole in the back just enough for the uh, nozzle of the can that the nozzle for that comes with the can for the spray foam can just go in and you can just spray it in there and you know let the thing do its job so that it can stay up and you can even help it by pulls it how you want it to stay um, and then you just put latex over the hole when you're done so that it just seals and it won't rock for future um i'm not going to do that at least yet with him because this one's broken and usually his electronics go up there um, he was looking a bit up before but i had to remove his electronics because they're broken so that's why he's looking down more so if i wanted to do that with him i just want to wait a little bit for to do the the expanding foam and then Hex here, I got him. And, you know, as more I put his neck against something, it gets more straight. But you can see he's looking uh, a bit back and his neck's kind of like, I guess, thinner. So, we, yeah, same thing. You know, I could just poke a little hole there with the, no the enough for the nozzle to get in, just to spray that so then his head becomes nice and stiff like that, how it's supposed to. Um, yeah, it's still a little bit warped, but like even if, see, if it looked normally like that, it'd still be bent in there, which, you know, if I just wanted to fill it then you know it still will be good so that I can fill that up and it looks nice so you know that's something I might consider doing uh it's the hard expanding foam I know these things are foam filled which you know I know people do foam filling but it's usually very pricey and you have to look for the right guy to do it and probably ship your items out to them but this uh you know you just get the uh hard ex spray expanding foam and it should work just fine I know um, other people that do that with their props to reform them and whatnot, and from what I see, it looks pretty good. And you can also like cut off any excess that um, you know may come, so just make it more flat with a knife or whatever. And uh, this might be the last point, but um, another thing I do want to talk about, and this actually does have to do with hot glue, but a little bit differently. So you know, I, before I talked about a sealing with hot glue. But uh, if, you know, like a piece of something like a finger or something falls off and you want to like connect it, um, and, you know, you just put latex on it or whatever. Um, the latex will really, I mean, it will, you know, eventually reform and dry. But the thing is, um, you, you, it'd be better if you just hot glue it, honestly, because you don't know if it's going to like be connected well or fully. So what I recommend doing is putting hot glue on it, then putting the latex over. So I'll show you something I did with this. Um, this is the Morbid Here's Jack really rare piece. Um, it's not rotting actually, but the stem actually has uh, uh, fallen off before. I did repair it with some hot glue and I, I painted it a little bit so it matched. But a uh, pretty good uh, paint combination there. As you can see, it does pretty much flow with this. That's the paint I added right there. This is the original. 
but it, it originally like snapped off so it snapped in the middle of there it snapped off there and yeah and up here so i just put um, glue and you use the hot glue gun and you just like kind of like so you don't if you don't want to make it puffy you just like go like that with the hot glue gun make it touch and like spread it out because obviously you don't want to touch it with your fingers that's going to burn and then you move your uh glue gun away and you cut the th the like, glue threads i guess you'd call them um and i'll show you proper ways to clean a glue gun as well but you know the, um, you glue it together and you see it's fine i didn't have to put latex on it because it wasn't really rotting but you could just put latex over it but that's how you um you use glue to reform something, which I think is uh, it really helps with the latex. So it, it just really helps connecting things better than, you know, just using latex by itself. But um, overall, I think that's the last point I want to do before I do a demonstration, which I will um, provide a few other things that will help out when repairing latex um, in the demonstration, which we'll, I'll show you right now. So this is a latex rat I picked up this uh, past Halloween season. And this was from around 2015, but that's been at the store for quite a while. But um, when I picked it up, I did notice that you can see there is rotting on there. So I'm going to do a demonstration on how to just simply fix latex and then go on, which, you know, this is just something basic, but, um, you know... It, it will, if you fix it now, it will be better because then eventually the whole latex will spread and get rotting more. So that won't be good. So you want to fix it as early as possible. Even if you see like tiny holes forming, you want to like try to stop it as possible because less latex and stuff you have to use. And then, you know, you can try to preserve it even more. But yeah, yeah. even though this is like something small, I'm going to show you guys how to repair it. And then if it's, you know, you have a prop that's like this, but it gets bigger, you know, at least you'll know what to do for the most part. So um, let's go ahead and get started. All right. So now we're going to be getting preparing the rat. Just, you know, a basic tip on it and give you a rough idea on how to fix this stuff. Um, also, you can use the tips that I mentioned before. But yeah, like I said, I already showed you the rotting down here. And this guy, um, you can see he's supposed to stand upright, but he just kind of like leans like that i don't know what the problem is maybe it's not like weight enough in here but I, you know i'm not gonna rip it open and just um you know risk doing that you know if i just like hold it down here it's fine or something but i'm not gonna worry about that really all i want to worry about right now is the rotting so i got my latex here i got my um disposable glove and yeah so you see there's a bunch of rotting around here and I recommend doing this on like a hard floor like this, not on carpet, because if you accidentally spill it, it's going to leave a bad stain. Um, you know, if you want to remove latex while it's still wet, I recommend, you know, just getting a really wet paper towel and try wiping it down. It might not get it all off, but it's worth a try that you can just put it in the wash. Can't guarantee it's going to get it all out, but yeah. So I'm going to show you what to do. So let me just try to stand them upright and sometimes what i like to do is use a flashlight if possible just get enough light so you can you don't want to miss any cracks or anything at all so you know i'm just going to casually take my finger here and i guess we can start on this side you might have to like hold on it's going to be kind of hard because i have to record this as well but i'm just going to put latex all over the rotting part and then i'm going to smooth it out and then i'll wipe down any um unnecessary spots so I'm going to do this for a little bit. I'm going to put the camera down and then I'll go over once I'm really done with this so that then I can use more hands. By the way, the smell in this stuff is really strong and it doesn't smell the best. So try not to like put your nose directly in it, I guess. Um, you could always wear like a mask or goggles or whatever you need it just in case. But uh, yeah. All right. So I pretty much just got this one side done for now. Um, I'm, you know, I, there were some excess, so I just like kind of wipe it down like that. You know, I could use a paper towel, or whatever. Um, but I know it does come out white, but trust me, it will come. Out, it depends how much you use, first of all. But normally, you know, with this kind at least, uh, which is one of the reasons why I recommended it, is because it will dry clear. It looks, it comes white, but it will dry clear. Just trust me on that. Um, and then you know, you just want to fill out the cracks and holes and stuff. So that's what I did. Just try not to waste. Um, try not to really waste all this. But, you know, use as much as you need and make sure you enforce it. And, you know, I always just put a little extra around the rotting, even on the non-rotting parts around it. Just go, so as, in case it spreads or whatever, it'll just keep it nice and tight and whatever. But, yeah. Um, I will say, when this does dry, it will be a bit shiny. But I don't think it's even going to matter, especially if you're going to display this out in the dark or whatever. It's just not going to matter. You know, you rather just 
um, have this fixed and continue to rot. So I'm going to go ahead and do the um, other side and then I'll come back. All right, so here's both sides completed. I know it does look like a little bit, um, you know, much, but um, yeah, I mean, it does fill it in. I think there's like a little spot right there. You can see I got to fill in, but other than that, you know, it's fine. Uh, I got, you know, when you're working in tight space like these, you might get some like, for example, like extra spots. So like you see, I got it on the foot right there. But, you know, it's fine. You can always wipe it off if you want to. Um, but one more thing I do want to mention, well, this is a good example we have here, is you want to look out for any weak spots as well. So if you look between, I know there's a little rip right there, but if you look between the legs right there, you can see it's not really rotted, but it does look like it's getting weak. I know you, it might just be, you could say it's good, the paint, but you know, you can just tell if something's getting weak. So I'm just going to go ahead and put some extra latex on that just to ensure, you know, because eventually you can just tell it's just going to crack in the future. So you just want to preserve it. And so, you know, obviously this whole thing will rot eventually, but um, even if, the, you know, even the latex I put on it will rot, but this will keep it good for like um, much longer than, you know, it would be without you putting it on it normally. So it'll preserve it for quite a bit. I couldn't say exactly when because each thing's different. But yeah. So, but yeah, these these weak spots will definitely get to rot first before, you know, like, for example, the face. It's most likely going to rot before, you know, the face or whatever gets um, rotted or whatever. But, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and put some extra latex on that and then we'll wait for it to dry and then we'll get back to the rat after that um i will show you guys a few extra tips on how to preserve latex and um i'm going to clean show you guys how to clean hot glue because i did mention the hot glue method in the meantime and then we'll get back to him uh i didn't i just for right now i just need i just had to put latex i need any of those extra techniques i already explained how to do that though in case you're curious but uh yeah we'll, we'll be back with this guy and i'm going to show you guys some ways to you know preserve latex for the future and um, a little bit of extra stuff, and then we'll come back and check on him, and yeah, that'll be that. All right, so I put all the latex on the rat, so we're just gonna wait for it to dry now. Um, yeah, I have my latex in here, and like I said, you don't wanna have it open for too long because it will dry it out. So you obviously wanna make sure this is uh, closed tightly, and if you have like any extra dry piece of the latex on the cover or anything, you wanna uh, make sure you take those off. You don't want it falling in here, it just it's kinda not that good, but uh, yeah, it's fine if it's wet like this. Uh, you can even, if you, you know, if you work a little, if you just get a little bit of this and just put it on here and you can uh, put your fingers in this and rub it all with a prop, then um, that, that's a good little, like, I guess, container you could call it. But yeah, I'm just going to put this on really tight so then it gets it all dried in nicely. So yeah, now I'm going to show you guys a few things, talk about a few things, then um, in the end we'll uh, talk about the rat when it dries. So we wait for the um, rat's latex to dry. In the meantime, I just want to, you know, talk to you guys about um, what contributes to rot a little bit more and, you know, ways to care slash uh, store latex props. Um, you know, I have uh, the Pudge's zombie baby here and it has shown a few signs of uh, rotting around the head, as you can see. Um, you know, it could just be because of age and whatnot. Um, you know, usually there, if there's like small holes in there, air gets in them and, you know, it dries up the latex because latex is a water-based um, material. So, you know, air can contribute by getting in. So, but, uh, you know, on these props, you know, I noticed on these older uh, SVI latex props and some of the morbid props too, they have um, these, l I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna try not to rip it even more, but you can see there's like these little, uh, styrofoam like pellets in there and styrofoam is a big uh, contribution to rot it uh absorbs moisture so it sucks out all the um it dries out the latex and absorbs the more moisture from it and you know that's why you know same things with masks if you put them on a styrofoam head they'll get uh dried out and whatnot and get hard so um you know it could be because this for example pudges here it could be because of air or the styrofoam, but yeah, those are just not good things for latex. Unfortunately, um, it's kind of hard to preserve it all the time, but you know, there are the ways you can do it. Um, you know, and another, well, before I get to more ways to preserving this, another thing that contributes to rot is if these like, you know, these are like stuffed props. So 
um, overstuffing can be a problem. If they're way overstuffed, they'll be a little bit puffed out, and then, you know, it'll just cause, I guess, stress on the latex, you could say, and then it just uh, burst open and whatnot, so being overstuffed is another issue. And, you know, obviously I, I know people won't spend their time just ripping out foam and stuff unless it's, you know, actually rotted. So if you got, like, a giant, like, hole right here because it's overstuffed, I recommend, you know, removing some of that uh, stuffing, what's in there. So just, uh, you know, make it a little bit uh, less tight or whatever you want to call it. So then, you know, just not putting a lot of stress on that. Now, ways to preserve this is... Don't st store these things in like barns, really, or uh, sheds with, especially with no climate control, because you know cold and and heat are really not good for these. If you we want them, I guess you could say a little bit more on the colder side would be good. Not heat's a big contribution because you know it starts melting it and whatnot. And it, but if it, there's a point where it gets too ha uh, cold and hards and cracks, but if it's just you know not normal room temperature, you know it's a little bit colder but not like too warm or not too cold, then I guess find like a normal basement would be good. That's where I store my stuff. And unfortunately, some of my stuff is rotting. Like most of the stuff I get latex wise, um, I get it rotting and then, you know, I just repair it. But, you know, some props of mine that I do have from a while ago, they do rot because like I said, latex doesn't last forever. It's going to rot either way. But, you know, there's ways to make it last longer. So, you know, basement's fine to store them in. Um, and, you know, if, uh, plastic bags that are, like, big enough to fit all these things in, uh, with, uh, try to remove air if you can, because uh, they'll keep it nice and, uh, I guess, locked tight or whatever, and the air, like I said, contributes to rotting, so, yeah, if you just put them in plastic bags, that also works, if, if when not in use, of course, you can use them in your display, but I don't recommend putting them out all season long, because, the outdoors is not really good for these things. It's fine if you put out for a Halloween night or like a weekend, but just try to uh, not really do that for too long because outdoors with these things is not good. It just weathers them down. Um, another good tip I know is uh, using Armor All. I think it's meant for cars, but you know, you got like a little bottle and you can use like, you know, same thing with latex. You just rub it all over them and um, it'll keep it all nice and tight. And you know, I guess it merges together. And you might have to do a late, a, you don't have to do it every so often, I guess. But, um, you know, maybe once a year, put a new coat on or whatever. It will make it shiny. But if, you know, you're putting these things out in the dark or whatever, I don't think it's going to matter. It's better to preserve these things and let them rot and, you know, whatnot. Um, I do have a lot of latex props, you know. I don't get them because they're latex. Honestly, latex, not going to lie, is one of my least favorite materials just because of rotting-wise. Even though I do have a lot of latex props, I don't get them because they're latex. I get them because they look cool. You know, if these were like hard foam or whatever, yeah, I'd still like them. You know, I like the looks and the scariness of them. Um, I got them because of what they look like and whatnot, not because of the material they're made out of. Um, but yeah, I think that's a lot about what I got to say for now. So we're going to go check out and see how our rat's doing. I want to show you guys this real quick. Um, if you have like, you know, small cracking in latex and you just want to easily seal it up, um, this Elmer's glue actually works good. Um, this is the kind of glue all, um, you, you know, you can buy this at like craft store, like Staples or places like that. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it's, I know it's like Elmer's glue, but it's meant to seal cracks and stuff. So you just put it, you just squeeze it around the cracks and you can rub it if needed and it actually seals it up pretty good. So I've used this a few times and it works every time. And then another thing, you know, on the fact of glue, I know I talked about using hot glue. Um, you know, I didn't need to use it on like the rat, but like I, I told you how you guys can use it. But you know, when you're done, um, you know, it might get a little bit messy. So, you know, you just get like a paper towel and you just like kind of rub it in enough until you get it all out and any extra glue that kind of peel falls out when you're unplugging it you just rub it there you don't want to really leave you don't want to like leave it like that once you're done um, you know rubbing it all off because then eventually um it'll rip and actually a part of the paper towel will actually get uh, stuck on there and that's not too good so just like you know put on like a nice surface but yeah, and you gotta wait for it to cool down, obviously. And then, yeah, you just throw this out. Yeah, and I'm gonna talk to you guys about what contributes to rot and uh, how you can store latex items properly um, in a sec. But 
Um, if you, you know, I, like, I want to talk to you guys about using latex, first of all. Like, obviously you saw me using the disposable glove, which I highly recommend. I know I said it a few times already. But it, just in case you get on your hand or skin, just use, like, regular um, water and soap, and it will work good. Usually, um, prefer to use a kitchen sink with a garbage disposal, because you use, like, a bathroom sink, you know, chunks of latex will get stuck in the drain and cl potentially clog it. So, you know, you just want to make sure it has an open drain, like a garbage disposal one in the kitchen so yep um and that's just easy to wash it off yourself so anyways i'm gonna go and show you guys uh what um contributes to rot and how to store latex items properly and then we'll um, go on from there all right so the rat's done drying and we're gonna see how we came out so we came out pretty good you can see it's um it is all filled in and you know, there's like some white spots in there from latex. It is dry. Um, I'm not going to worry about painting that because it's just something minor, you know. If it's something small like that, I'm not going to worry about it. If it was like a big rip on the example, I'd paint it like I've done in the past. You can see I've covered all the weak spots as well. You can see it is a bit shinier, but you can see how clear it tried though. And uh, even if it, you know, dry shiny, it's not even going to be a big deal. I mean, this prop, in a way, is already kind of shiny, but, you know, most people are won't even care. I mean, it's, like I said before, it's better than just, you know, leaving it unfixed, letting it rot even more. But, yeah, this stuff's great that I use. Um, and overall, um, you know, it dried pretty good, and it came out pretty nicely. Uh, dried, it, it, the latex I use, I mean, obviously it depends how much you put on, so it will dry. So depending on what you put on, it might dry you, um, fat, like, for a little bit or, you know. It might dry pretty quick, it might dry, take a little bit longer, like, this probably, like, at least dried in with, like, 30 minutes, so this may be, like, I don't know, a little longer, but not much. Uh, but yeah, and this is just a simple repair, obviously, I taught you how to do bigger repairs. But yeah, I think that's gonna do it for this video, um, overall, nice repair, and glad I could show you guys these tips, because all these tips I use do work. And you can also use these on masks as well. Um, you know, any it, this works for all kinds of latex, really. So, yeah. Um, I hope you guys um, enjoy this video. Hope it's helpful. And if you guys do have any other questions, um, ask in the comments below, and I'll try my best to answer them. If I, you know, I covered most of the stuff in this video that I do. There might be there's probably other tips out there, but these are the tips I use for when I fix my latex stuff. But yeah, if you have any questions, um, drop them in the comments. I might be able to. Uh, assist you if you have any other further questions but yeah that's going to do it for this video i'm glad i can make this and show you guys some um cool tricks and uh, techniques that um for latex so yeah that's all i really gotta say and if um hopefully you guys lasted this whole video i know it was quite a bit but you know i, I want to show you guys everything so yeah until the next time see you guys bye